Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're going to answer that age-old question in biology. If you want a cell to multiply, it has to divide. Today we're going to take a look at why cells divide, and then we'll take a look at how they divide. This is really a fascinating process. When you think about it, we all started as a single cell, and now we're up to around 10 trillion cells. Let's take a look at, first of all, why cells have to divide. We know that once a cell is formed, that they will grow, but eventually they're going to end up dividing. Well, why is that? There are two main reasons why cells have to divide. Let's take a look at one. Here is a server from the early 1990s. Now, back then, there weren't a whole lot of personal computers. There weren't a lot of people online. The internet was mostly in government offices and in colleges. People just simply didn't have access to the internet. Imagine if all of the computers today had to connect online to the servers of the 1990s. Things would really be slow. Nowadays, we see servers like this that can handle the demand of all of these computers trying to get online at the same time. We see something similar happening in the cell. So let's jot a few of these reasons down. One is that DNA supplies information that is needed to build molecules for cell growth. All that DNA is found in the nucleus, and it's controlling everything that's going on inside the cell. The bigger the cell gets, the more demand there is on the DNA to control everything that's going on inside the cell. So we can simply say that the larger the cell, the more information is needed from the DNA. At some point, the cell is going to get so big that the DNA simply can't keep up with the demand for information that's needed. The second reason well, let's take a look at a picture of New York City. This is going way back into the 17th century. And as you can see, there's a couple of bridges. There's ways that uh, people can get on and off that island. But let's take a look at it today. There's a lot more people living in that small area. And all those people need things like food. And so that food has to be able to get on the island somehow. Uh, People need to get from one place to another. So what we see are lots more bridges, there's tunnels under the water, lots of different ways in which people can get in and out of the city and to get things in and out of the city. And so what we can simply say here is that food and oxygen also need to get inside of the cell. Waste products have to get out of the cell. This is all going to happen as it leaves or enters through the cell membrane. Remember we talked about how things like diffusion and osmosis and facilitated diffusion work. Here's the thing though, the surface area of the cell determines how many substances can enter or leave the cell. So in other words what that means is that the area of the cell membrane is a limited amount. Only so many uh, molecules can enter or leave at any given time. Well as the cell gets bigger you need more materials to get into the cell. We need more oxygen. We need more glucose. More waste is being made, and that has to get out of the cell. So eventually what's going to happen is the cell would get so big that it wouldn't be able to keep up with the demand. And so this is the reason why cells are so small. We'll take a look at this in a future lab. Let's take a look at this idea of why cells if they get too big, they can't get enough materials inside. We know that before it becomes too large, it will divide and then form into two cells. By dividing, that increases the surface area to volume ratio. And so let's take a look at what this means. Let's say we have a, a cube-shaped cell, and that little red circle is representing the nucleus. Let's take a look at this cube-shaped cell, for example. The round circle that you see in the middle is the nucleus. If it is one centimeter on one side, which would be a very big cell, by the way, but if, to find the volume, we would take length times width times height, or one times one times one, which is one cubic centimeter. The surface area, however, is length times width times the number of sides, which would be one times one, which is one, times six sides, which is six. Let's take a look at a little bit larger 
cell. Let's say that this was two centimeters on each side. So if we take a look at the volume, it's two times two times two, which two times two is four times two is eight. Uh, if we look at the surface area, two times two is four times six, the number of sides is 24. And if we take a look at one even larger, let's say that this was three centimeters on a side. Notice the, although it might look like that circle is getting smaller, it's actually the same size in all three of these cubes. Three times three is nine, times three is 27 cubic centimeters for the volume, but the surface area is nine, three times three, times the number of sides, six, which is 54, right? So when we calculate the surface area to volume ratio, the small one, the one cubic centimeter side, is a, has a six to one ratio. In other words, there's six times the surface area as there is to the volume. But if the cell gets larger, that goes down to a three to one ratio. The surface area is only three times larger than the volume. And as the cell gets even larger, that surface area to volume ratio goes down to one and a half to one. It's almost a one to one ratio, which simply means that there's not enough area for things like oxygen and nutrients to get in and waste products to get out. Before cells get to the point where they can't get enough nutrients in, they will divide. And when they get smaller, their surface area to volume ratio goes up. We're gonna take a look at this in our next lab. And I think you're gonna have fun making some models of cells. I'll see you then.